Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the division properties of exponents. So if you go ahead and take a look at the first one, I've got 4 to the 5th divided by 4 to the 2nd. And if I am going to figure this out using expanded form, I'm going to expand the top, expand the bottom. And so because this is division, if you think about it, 4 divided by 4, well, that's equal to 1. And so if I can cancel out some of my 4s, then you can see how many you have left over, right? So 4 divided by 4, I'm going to cross that out because that's actually 1. And 4 divided by 4 is 1, I'm going to cross that out. And if you look, you have 3 left over. So I have 3 factors of 4, and now this answer I can actually write as 4 to the 3rd. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. The next one says x to the 8th times x to the 4th. So let's expand the top. x to the 8th means I'm multiplying x 8 times... So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's over 4 x's. So I've got 1 x times x times x times x. And then if I start canceling some out, well, that is equal to 1. x divided by x is equal to 1. x divided by x is equal to 1. x divided by x is equal to 1. And so how many x's do I have left over? I have 4 x's left over. And then I can rewrite that as x to the fourth. Let's try the next one. I've got x to the fourth times y squared. So that means x times x times x times x times two y's over x squared times y. So I've got x times x times y. And because the x's represent the same number, I can actually cross out two of them because those represent one. And remember, 1 times anything is itself, which is why I'm not writing the 1's. And then I can cross out one set of y's, because y divided by y is going to be 1. And so what I'm left with is I'm left with 2 x's and 1 y. So I could rewrite it as x squared y. So now let's just go ahead and take a look. Just like with multiplication, we are doing something with the exponents, right? So here are my exponents in the first one were 4 and, or 5 and 2. So if you think about subtracting your exponents, 5 minus 2 gives me 3, right? So I am left with 3, right? And it's subtracting because really what we're doing is we're, we're canceling some of them out, right? So here I had 8 and 4. Well, 8 minus 4 is 4, right? So I could just take my exponents and do 8 minus 4, and I'm left with what the exponent is, right? So in the next one, go ahead and look at your exponents on x. Your exponents on x were 4 and 2. Well, I just do 4 minus 2, and I'm left with 2 x's. Well, then with y, on y, I had 2, so it's just 2 minus 1, and I'm left with just 1 y, right? So now I can come up with my rule. It's w it works when we are dividing powers. If they have the same base, all you have to do is subtract your exponents. So we're going to write subtract the exponents. So let's go ahead and try some without doing it in expanded form. Okay, so here I've got m to the ninth over m to the fifth. So if you think about it, I'm going to have 9m's on the top, 5m's on the bottom. If I just subtract 9 minus 5, I'm going to be left with 4. So this one just becomes m to the fourth. Go ahead and try the next one on your own. Go ahead and stop the video. Try the next one on your own. Okay, you should have gotten a to the third, b to the sixth. Don't remember, or don't forget, <laughs> that the last, the one at the bottom, actually has an exponent of one on it. All right? Now let's do 4c together. If you take a look at 24k to the h, h squared over 6h, well, 24 and 6, let's just take a look at that. 24 and 6, those are not exponents. This is just division, right? So 24 divided by 6 is just 4. Or you could look at this like you're, it's the improper fraction, 24 over 6, and you could reduce it to 4 over 1. But remember that one on the bottom? 
isn't really necessary. So what I have here is four. You actually divide your coefficients. The k, I don't have any other k's, so that k stays there. And then when I do h to the second over h, well, the exponent, 2 minus 1, is 1. So I'm just left with h. So everything in my denominator completely cancels out. So I'm just left with 4kh. Let's take a look at 4d. 12 over 18. If you feel like you can stop the video and try this one on your own, go for it, OK? 12 over 18. Now, I can't do 12 divided by 18 and get a nice pretty number. So we're going to look at 12 over 18 like it's a fraction, 12 eighteenths. And we're going to reduce it. So 12 and 18 are both divisible by 6. So then we can do 12 divided by 2 is, or 12 divided by 6 is 2. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. So 12 eighteenths is 2 thirds. So we're going to write it as 2 thirds. Now we still have some exponents, some variables with exponents on it. So we're going to, ex we're going to go ahead and subtract the exponents on the w's. Now if you think about it, w to the fourth over w to the fourth, everything there is going to cancel out. If you subtract your exponents, you get 4 minus 4, which is 0, which means you have 0 w's. So the w completely cancels out. And then, excuse me, v to the 6 over v to the 3rd will subtract 6 minus 3, and you're left with 3 v's. So I have 2 v to the 3rd on the top over 3. You can write this as 2 thirds v to the 3rd. However, I like to keep things as one big fraction. Okay, this is, this answer is still correct, but I like this answer better. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Now don't freak out that the next one has a negative exponent because we're just going to follow the rule. We subtract the exponents and it's always the top minus the bottom. So be careful with this. We're doing 3 minus negative 5. So think about 3 minus negative 5. 3 minus negative 5 is really 3 plus positive 5. So that is 8. So I get C to the eighth power here. Okay, now letter F, we just take a look at it again. Think about the rule. The rule is subtract the exponents. So I'm just doing N minus X. So I'm going to rewrite this as H to the N minus X. Now letter G, remember the rule is you can subtract the exponents if you have the same base. The base of the A is M and K. This one, we can't subtract those exponents because they don't have the same base. So we're going to say that this one is already simplified. Now you could rewrite it as m over k in parentheses to the a power because they have the same exponent, which kind of leans into what we're going to talk about next. So this is talking about the power of a quotient, right? So it's like a division problem or a fraction being taken to a power. So just think about this. If I have 2 thirds to the third power, what that means is I'm doing 2 thirds three times. So I've got 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So I have 3 factors of 2 in my numerator, and I have 3 factors of 3 in my denominator. So I could rewrite this as 2 to the third, over 3 to the third. And of course, if I was asking you to simplify this, you would have to tell me that that's 8 over 27. Okay? The next one, let's say I've got 4 over m squared. Well, this just means I'm doing 4 over m times 4 over m. And if you look at your numerator, well, you have two fours in the numerator, and you have two m's in the denominator. So I could rewrite that as 4 squared over m squared, okay? The next one, I've got y over x to the third. So that just means I'm doing y over x times y over x times y over x, right? So if you look in the numerator, I just have three y's. In the denominator, I just have three x's. So that could be re rewritten as y to the third over x to the third. So now look, how am I getting from this column to this column without having to do it in an expanded form. It's very similar 
than what we did when we're taking a power to a power. When you have a quotient raised to a power, you do the same thing. You just bring the exponent in, but you have to remember to apply the exponent to all the factors on the top and all the factors on the bottom, right? So you apply the exponent, apply the exponent to all factors. in the numerator and denominator. And you can say in the, on the top and the bottom if that's easier for you. So in the numerator and denominator. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. All right, so just a quick reminder, when you have variables or numbers without exponents on them, you can imagine that there are these imaginary little ones on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the exponent to the m and the exponent to the 2. So what I end up getting is m to the fifth over 2 to the fifth. But I don't want you to leave it like that. I want you to figure out what 2 to the fifth is. So if I do m to the fifth over 2 to the fifth, well, 2 to the fourth is 16. And so 2 to the 5th is then 32. So you get m to the 5th over 32. Now let's take a look at the next one. You have to apply that 3 now to everyone. Imagine that there's a little imaginary 1 on the 3, the a, and the d, right? So now when I bring this exponent in, it's got to go on the 3. So again, remember, when you're bringing an exponent from the outside in, you're multiplying exponents. So if there's an imaginary 1 on that 3, 1 times 3 is 3. So what you're doing is 3 to the third power, then a to the third power, then d to the ninth power, because I'm multiplying 3 times 3. Then you have to do it on the bottom as well. Don't forget the bottom. So I'm going to get c to the twelfth power because 4 times 3 is 12, and then d to the third power, because 1 times 3 is 3. But then I have to fully simplify this, and 3 to the third is actually 27. And then I've got this a to the third. Now I want you to also pay really close attention right here, d to the ninth over d to the third. They have the same base, so what do I do with those exponents? I subtract them. So 9 minus 3 is 6. So I'm left with d to the 6th over c to the 12th. So we no longer have any d's in the denominator because they canceled out. So that is my final answer. All right, now I want you to try 5c and 5d 100% on your own and then come back to me. So stop the video right now and try them. So there are the correct answers. Notice in 5C, I did th put in the interim step there. You don't have to write that step. If you want to go straight from the problem to the answer here, that is totally fine with me. All right, now let's take a look at the next set of problems. All right, for this next set of problems, I want you to notice that if I am going to simplify this, the x's have the same base, so I would subtract my exponents and get 6 minus 9, which is actually going to give me a negative number. I don't want a negative exponent in my answer. In fact, we are going to talk about negative exponents in the very near future, but not today. So here's what I want you to think about. If you notice, I've got 6 on the top and 9 on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and expand this and just see what happens, right? So on the top, I have 2 times 6 x's on the top. So x times x times x times x times x times x. And then on the bottom, I have 9 x's. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? Now think about what we did when we were in expanded form. The x divided by x is 1. So we're actually going to cancel out a total of 6. And what I have left is I have 3 x's on the bottom. Those have to stay on the bottom. They're in the denominator. So it's, this is a fraction. So my final answer, on the top I have a 2. On the bottom I have x to the third. So my answer is 2 over x to the third. Now let's go ahead and take a look at 6b. 
go ahead and expand it, right? So I've got on the top a 10 times 3x's, so x times x times x, times 2y's, so y times y. On the bottom I have a 5, and 4x's, x times x times x times x, and then on the bottom I've got 5y's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 y's, okay? Now, again, reminder, the 10 over 5 we're going to reduce that. That's 2 over 1. But we don't need the 1 in the denominator. We just have a, or the, yeah, so we just have a 2 in the numerator. And so now we can cancel out my x's. So I cancel out 3 total x's, and I cancel out 2 total y's. So I have no variables on the top, but I have 1x left over at the bottom, and I have 3x, 3 y's left over on the bottom. So that's 2 over x, y to the third, okay? So the rule of thumb here is we want to just pay attention. If you have more variables on the bottom than you do on the top, when you subtract, you're going to end up with that number in the denominator, right? Or you can even think about it, if you're going to end up with a negative exponent, you have some left over in the bottom, okay? So just think about canceling things out. Here you had 3 at the top, 4 on the bottom and then you had to cancel out all three on the top, you're left with one on the bottom. Here you had to cancel out the two on the top, and you're left with three on the bottom, right? So you're taking two away from the five. But notice, because there are more on the bottom, the final answer has your exponent on the bottom. So now go ahead and try the next two on your own. You can either try it with expanded form, or you can just try to do it in your head. So stop the video, try the next two 100% on your own, and then tune back in. Okay, so let's see how you did. Reminder, we are gonna leave these things as one big fraction, right? So the two eights, we, they're not exponents, you don't subtract them, you reduce the fraction two eights. So I reduced it to one fourth here. And then my a's, look, I have four a's on the top and six a's on the bottom. So I have more on the bottom than I do on the top. So if I cancel out the four up here and four down here, I'm left with two on the bottom. And then I've got six here and one here, and I'm left with five on the top. So notice there were more on the top here, so it stayed on the top. Now my final answer does not include that one, because one times b to the fifth is just b to the fifth because of the multiplicative identity property, right? So this would be my 100% simplified version, all right? Now the next one. Notice here that you have negative six over four. That is an improper fraction. Do not change this to a mixed number because what we want, this is one big fraction. We are going to leave it just as one big fraction. So we're gonna treat this like negative six over four. We're gonna leave it improper. It reduces to negative three over two. Do not make that negative one and a half, okay? Now, up at the top, we have an x, and down at the bottom, we have x to the ninth. So we have more x's on the bottom. The one at the top cancels out. You're gonna be left with eight on the bottom. And then we have more y's on the top than we do the bottom. That counts as one. You're taking one away from that. You're left with six on the top. So basically, if you have more on the bottom, your variable stays on the bottom. If you have more on the top, your variable stays on the top. We do not change improper fractions to mixed numbers. We just leave it like that, and we leave it all as one big fraction. All right, go ahead and try to finish the rest of the problems for homework. And if you're struggling with anything, please make sure you ask.